All right, so there's our conduction rate equation. Um, let's imagine uh, a copper bar uh, that's initially at zero degrees, uh, and we hold one end at 50 degrees uh, and one end at zero. So we're going to imagine at steady state uh, what is that temperature field going to look like. So in our plot here, um, initially our temperature is zero everywhere. Um, and then we're going to heat up one end of it at 50 degrees. So you can imagine initially uh, this end of the bar, this bar is going this way, would be 50 degrees and everything else would be zero. What happens over time? Well, that heat is going to move from an area of high intensity and it's going to diffuse into the rest of the bar. So let's imagine we're in that process uh, and the bar is starting to heat up. It's hotter over here, but it's still quite cool over here. That heat hasn't diffused all the way to the left side of the bar. So imagine this section. What's going to happen? Look at your rate equation. What's dt dx? Oh, it's tx, the rate of change of t of x. It's the slope in this plot. Okay, so my slope here is bigger than my slope at B. So what does that mean? Okay, that means my slope is bigger, my material is the same, so my heat flux at A is higher than my heat flux at B. Okay, this is heat flux into this section, into this box. This is heat flux out of it. So this is saying, okay, more heat is being transferred and diffused into this section of the pipe than is being diffused out of that section. So this part of the pipe is going to start to increase in temperature. Okay, that makes sense, right? We're still, we started with the whole bar at zero and heated up one end. So we would expect the bar to heat up. Uh, and the reason it's heating up here is because we've got more heat flux in than we do out. So if we want this to be steady state, uh, we need to have the same heat flux on both sides of every section in the bar. In other words, the only, this section of the bar will keep the same temperature when the slope at A is the same as the slope at B. Okay, when is that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen when you have a linear plot here, right? If my plot of temperature were a straight line, then I can say every section, no matter how wide I made the section or narrow, um, my slope on one side would be at the same as the slope on the other, and so I wouldn't be changing temperature anymore. So the final state of this bar is going to be a linear plot from zero at zero to 50 degrees at one meter. All right, so that's the basics of Fourier's law. One last slide here just to show you what this looks like in 3D. Um, in uh, multiple dimensions, it, it basically looks the same. We're just adding uh, uh, little differential equations uh, in each uh, direction. So uh, like a, you know, say kinematics, we can deal with this in one um, direction at a time. Uh, so what is this equation? This here, instead of k dt dx, we have a vector pointing in each of the x, y, and z direction. So ij and k are our unit vectors. Um, and then the temperature gradient in each direction uh, can be calculated separately uh, in order to find our overall flux. In practice, uh, what that means is uh, that the flux is always going to be perpendicular to an isotherm. Um, and we won't bother to sort of show this mathematically, but that makes sense physically, right? You would expect if 
that this area, say, is hotter uh, than this area, and it was, you know, the isotherms were in no, along that sort of curved section, we would expect that the energy would move uh, across those isotherms uh, perpendicular as it moves from the hottest place uh, as quickly as it can uh, to the coldest place. Uh, in cylindrical coordinates, uh, and that's what we have here, is just a picture of what cylindrical coordinates looks like. Uh, our equation looks like this. We will do some cylindrical coordinates questions uh, uh, later, but we're not going to worry too much about those uh, about that right now. Just know that um, we can take Fourier's law in that simplified 1D version uh, and expand it out so that we can deal with more complex geometries. Uh, and that is uh, all we've got on conduction.